Hey, good morning. It's Valerie Ling. I'm coming live to you from my kitchen this morning. It is 11 a.m. Sydney time when I'm recording this and I'm at the kitchen about to wash the dishes, which has now become my daily morning routine. I spoke a little bit about this yesterday as to why I've taken back washing the dishes and why it's so important. And I just got off a Twitter space conversation with Justin Tang. He's the founder of Advendo.ai. He also happens to be my brother. So you can catch the recording on Twitter. Uh, just look up his handle, Justin Tang. And we were talking about how life has, um, are we losing our hearts with the advent of uh, artificial intelligence and chat GPT? Now don't tune off if you think this is going to be a tech dump. It is not. I'm here in my kitchen, in the heart of my home, washing the dishes, wanting to say something to you about what it means in this new age and burnout. He actually said something to me that I, I picked up on and I, I wanted to drill down in my own space because this is the thing that I think about, which is how since this new technology has come uh, into our world, how life for him has really sped up. And guess what? I am experiencing the same thing. Uh, you don't need to know what chat GPT and AI is, but it is going to change the world. And essentially, it basically makes what you do a lot quicker and a lot faster and bypasses quite a lot of the human thinking that you need to do. And so in a span of three weeks, since this technology has become available, I have I don't know whether doubled is quite accurate, but I certainly have increased my own personal workload. So here's the thing, right? If you're um, in business, if you're an innovator, even if you're not an entrepreneur, but you're an intrapreneur, meaning that wherever you are in your work life, you are innovating and you're contributing uh, to new things in new ways, you are more than likely to be an early adopter. Meaning before things have actually hit mainstream, you've been dabbling with it for a while anyway. And artificial intelligence uh, has been something that I've been dabbling in for a little while, mainly for my own curiosity. And, you know, uh, for, for a while now, you'd, you'd have to pay to get access to any of these things. But because of that, because it wasn't so freely accessible, I wasn't really using it in a very integrated way. So being an early adopter just means that you've got uh, a drive within you to get in there, to experiment, to try to figure out. And then there's a second component when you're an innovator, which is to be disruptive. <laughs> Essentially, you want to adopt and you want to try and you want to use um, so that you can disrupt whatever is standard at the moment and pretty much get ahead. Now, I'm driven not so much by my competitive nature. I'm driven in this space um, purely by curiosity. And in the last two to three weeks, just because I have um, been experimenting with ways to ask questions, right? So I can pull together three different sources of, uh, let's say, information or writings and ask really specific questions of ChatGPT that would have taken me hours to, to actually do. And yesterday I realized I have changed in the last two to three weeks because I'm moving so fast and tackling so many different things and switching between focus groups so rapidly uh, that I'm actually not going to be in a good space if I keep going. And that's exactly what my brother said. He was like, if I keep going at this space, like it used to be that you'd fill in the blank spaces with appointments and maybe flipping through um, you know, different Google sites and websites to get information. But now you're actually flipping between completing tasks at a rate that is higher than you have ever done. So you put on more because if you were able to finish that in five minutes, well, then you should be able to do like 10 or 15 other things now. And I just want to say that and this is the thing that I was talking about in our talk today, but our brains and our bodies have not adapted. And this is what I keep saying with every new thing in technology that's meant to help us with productivity. The way that our brains and our bodies work, however, is not or has not changed. And so I'm coming back to 
really basic things. You would hear me talk about circuit breakers, where I used to say, have a stretch, go to the toilet, have a drink of water, make yourself a cup of tea. I'm just coming back to really routine sensory things like doing the dishes in between workflow chunks. This is helping me. This is a sensory activity that forces me actually, although I'm doing a live right now, so I'm not really, but if I wasn't chatting with you, to attend to individual items, uh, the, the feel of the water, the smell of the soap, as I stare out into the window, because I have a window next to me, I'm noticing Teddy, our dog, and what he's doing. And I'm just doing one thing at a time. And you know what? It really slows me down. This is what we are going to need. Even if you are not adopting AI and ChatGPT, the speed of the world that has embraced and integrated this will increase. And what will be expected and what will be put out in terms of information is just going to go up in volume. So, hey, I am just announcing the gift of the basic act of dishwashing at this point in time. It's mindful. It slows you down. You're serving people that are important to you. And as you're doing it, you're thinking of them, hopefully not in a grumpy way. I've just let go you know, of any thoughts or feelings that I have about a sink full of dishes. It doesn't matter. This is my opportunity to have a circuit breaker and to uh, slow my pace down and not chuck another thing on my plate just because I can. I um, would love to hear what's it been like for you. Are you an early adopter of this new technology? Are you finding the same thing? Do you slow down through the humble act of washing the dishes? I'd love to know.